In the last few sessions, we have discussed corporations. We've discussed how to organize a corporation, how to manage a corporation, how a corporation should be run. We've discussed limited liability companies and how to do that. We've also discussed sole proprietorships and some discussion of trusts. Today, I want to discuss the difference between a C corporation and an S corporation. It's imperative that you know the difference between these two because many times, just off of a knee-jerk reaction, many will suggest, especially if you are a single owner businessman or woman, many will suggest that you must be an S corporation. I believe that our company is probably one of the only companies that try to persuade individuals not to be an S corporation. There used to be some benefit to it years ago, but now that the LLC has come in, there really isn't much of a benefit. So let's go back to discussing right now what it takes to run a corporation. C corporations and S corporations must be organized exactly the same way. There's no difference. In fact, is a C corporation and an S corporation are both C corporations by organization. The first step in organizing an S corporation is to file with the state articles of incorporation which tell the state that you're going to be a corporate structure. A corporate structure entails having shareholders, issuing stock to those shareholders, having board of directors meetings, having officers of the company. They all have to be part of both corporations, C corporation and an S corporation. Once you have filed with the state to become a C corporation, then you file with the IRS a form number 2553 as an application to apply to the IRS to give you the tax designation as a subchapter S corporation. C stands for classic, S stands for small business. C corporations pay their own tax. S corporations pass through the profits to the individual owners of the company. C corporations have a little higher tax rate according to most analysts just because most owners of small businesses that are taxed as S corporations because they file the profits of an S corporation on their own taxes <coughs> will have a lower tax rate because most of the time the individual tax rate is lower than the corporations. The difference between a C corporation and an S corporation is, is that most people are worried about what's called double taxation. The double taxation comes in one of two ways. A C corporation, if it has officers they, and they pay those officers, the officers have to be a W-2 salaried ind individual. Because of that, the officers themselves pay an income tax. The biggest concern about C corporations double taxation is that if they issue dividends or share the profits with the shareholders, the shareholders pay tax on what they receive and the corporation also pays tax on that same amount. The corporation has to pay tax on 100% of its profits and distributions to shareholders are not tax deductible. They are not an expense. Therefore, there's a double taxation on the amount that's given to shareholders. We want to have the corporations in our case organized a lot differently so that that double taxation standard doesn't work. In an S corporation, at the end of the year, or whenever the tax year is for a corporation, for this corporation, the corporation distributes the profits using an IRS Schedule K-1 to the individual owners, and the individual owners show that as income on their income tax. The corporation itself does not pay tax. Therefore, the only designation that's different is how it's taxed. So in other words, C corporations, S corporations must be organized the same until the IRS grants them the status of a small business and taxed as a small business distributed to the owners. A C corporation can have tax advantages that an S corporation cannot have. C corporation can pay for life insurance if it's set up properly. It can pay for health insurance. It can do uh, 401ks and other retirement things. S corporations cannot do that because the money paid for those services 
it has to be shown on the individual owner's income tax return as guaranteed income. So it's income to an S corporation. So today, what I want to do real quickly is to discuss the pros and cons tax-wise of an S corporation. First off, as we discussed, the corporation must be organized as a C corporation. There is no simple organization. S corporations were brought into law in 1959 by the federal government. They actually were not implemented until about 10 years later. Limited liability companies, which do some things similar to S corporations, were organized for the first time in Wyoming. So C corporations and S corporations are governed by federal corporate law. Limited liability companies are governed by state law. The S corporation, as we discussed earlier, is a tax designation only, not an organization structure. However, with this tax, tax designation, there are things that an S corporation cannot do without having the owner show it as guaranteed income. First, in an S corporation, it's required that the owner or owners that are basically managing the company be paid a W-2 salary. So you, as the owner, now become an employee. You have to have income tax taken. You don't have to have Social Security taken out, but you're also subject to state rules of workman's compensation and uh, other employee taxes. With the exception of Social Security, that's the only tax you don't have to worry about paying. That lessens your Social Security right there. Number two, a C corporation can pay its officers, but it's not required to pay the officers. Therefore, the S corporation is putting you in a position where you don't have any choice but to pay yourself as an officer of the corporation. And the other interesting part is, is that the IRS could come in and say, you're not paying yourself enough. Therefore, Uncle Sam's looking over your shoulder all the time. You're always in jeopardy of the IRS finding that you're not doing something right and coming back and then saying you haven't paid yourself enough therefore you now owe us more tax and and you also owe us penalties because you didn't pay yourself enough in the first place. The other part that really is a disadvantage in my opinion is, is if you're going to be a corporation why not take full advantage of all of the tax benefits of a C corporation. If you are an S corporation you still have to not only pay yourself a wage you have to issue shares of stock to yourself. You have to have a board of directors. You have to have meetings of the shareholders. You have to have meetings of the board of directors. You have to keep minutes of those meetings. Why would anybody want to have that type of management and not be able to use some of the tax benefits of a C corporation? C corporations can write off a lot of things that S corporations and limited liability companies cannot write off as a tax deduction, as an expense. And as we discussed before, the C corporation can retain money in there even though the tax rate's a little bit higher. Federal law with this last tax change stated that the corporation's highest tax rate from the federal point of view is 21%. States, other states vary. In Utah, it's about 5%. So you've got about a 26% tax rate in Utah alone. A lot of people like having you file in Arizona, not Arizona, Nevada, and Delaware, and I'm really dead set against those as well, because there are a lot of controls in there. It's difficult to get out. You have to, it's going to cost you a lot of money to run it. I don't understand it. In addition to that, the state tax rate there is higher. Now, let's, let me make a, an explanation. Nevada really technically doesn't have a state tax, but they have a franchise tax. Delaware is the same way. In fact, if you put the wrong type of stock in Delaware and you have too much of that wrong type of stock, you could be paying as much as $125,000 a year in franchise tax without even making a dime. Therefore, what you want to do is to put yourself in a position where the corporation pays very little tax and the individual pays no tax on the money that it gets. Now, a corporation, of course, has the double taxation standards, which means that if there's a distribution, if there's a payment of dividends to the shareholders, the shareholders pay tax on that amount and the corporation pays tax on that amount. 
on an S corporation, as explained previously. The distribution at the end comes when there is a, a profit that is made, and the individual then pays a tax on that profit. But it's not a regular tax. Now, the reason that most people are, have been re received recommendation from attorneys and CPAs that they be an S corporation is to avoid the self-employment tax. But there's still a tax involved. The biggest concern that I've got is that those profits have to be can only, can only be down to zero. You can't take it less than zero. In other words, if you got a profit of fifty thousand dollars, and you can take that down, any of the money that you've pulled out yourself is considered taxable income. That's money that you have to pay yourself, and that's part of the distribution. You can't take that lower than zero and it's considered passive income. Now, passive income in explanation means this. Uh, let me give you an example. You go out and buy a, a, a 500 share of stock you know, on the big five. Uh, let's say, uh, go and do Amazon. You buy shares of stock on Amazon. Amazon distributes a dividend to you at the end of the year. You pay a capital gains tax on that distribution. That's a profit that you have to pay a tax on. But, it can be reduced, but it can only be reduced as if you were to go to uh, some other company, uh, uh, eBay or uh, General Electric or something of that nature, and that company that you've invested in loses money. That loss can be taken against the profits made on the first investment, but you can't go lower than zero. So if you have more passive losses, then you do income, you can't use those passive losses. And if you have active losses, uh, say that you have another company that is involved in, that is not an S corporation, that, that's got real estate in it and it's got other uh, equipment that you can depreciate and it's got other expenses and you're actively involved in that company and that has a loss, you cannot distribute that loss to pay off the, the investment loss that you've gotten from your S corporation. The IRS takes a look at it as though you have made an investment in your own company and therefore you're taxed as though it is a dividend from another company and cannot be reduced. It can be reduced by the expenses of the S corporation alone or it can be reduced by other passive losses. It can't be reduced lower than zero and you cannot use active losses from other investments and other companies that you are actively involved in to be able to reduce that passive income that you're trying to pay the tax on. So the passive income that you're going to be gaining is taxed similar to a capital gains tax. It's a little bit lower than self-employment tax and a lot of uh, very wealthy people use this to be able to live off of. The thing that I'm concerned with is that you ought to be able to use some active losses to reduce your income. So what you've done with an S corporation is limited yourself to the type of losses you can have, how you can reduce your income tax, and having to pay yourself a W-2 tax to me doesn't save you any tax because you're paying taxes. You're letting the federal government use your money interest-free for a year. You ought to have an organization that you can use it as active losses you can take it lower than zero, you're not required to pay yourself a wage, and you can take advantage of every tax benefit that you can, ha you can take out there. Uh, and those are the things that you can do with a limited liability company and a C corporation together. So the next time, let's discuss some tax benefits of a C corporation and an LLC used conjointly.